Okay, welcome back everyone. I have finally gotten around to making an update for the Life Engine. There is a couple of cool features that I've added, some of which have been on my list for quite a while now, so it's nice to finally get those off of my chest. So the main change is on the statistics panel. Uh, we now have graphs. Uh, graphs that show various statistics about uh, the organisms and the ecosystem. So this is the population graph, and uh, you can see it shows you how many organisms exist in the environment at the current time. And uh, it shows kind of how this changes over time, which is pretty nice to be able to see. And additionally, we also have some other graphs. Um, this is the species graph. So species are calculated by uh, every time there's a mutation that changes the, the cellular structure of an organism that's a new species. So you can see there's new species that have formed up at the top. Uh, and uh, every time there's a new species, it is added to the species graph. So you can see there, there's a kind of a rough correlation between the species graph and the population graph. They more or less uh, correlate, but sometimes they don't. It's kind of interesting when they don't, when they do. And this is the organism size and composition graph. So it shows you the average number of cells uh, that make up an organism. So this black line shows uh, this is the average size of an organism. And the other colored lines show the average number of the various types of cells that can be in an organism. So the green line, for instance, shows the average number of green producer cells in each organism. So this kind of helps you visualize how the composition of organisms changes over time. You can see that the number of green cells has dipped as the number of blue cells has increased. There are now more movers uh, than there are uh, producers. And the final graph is the mutation rate graph. So this one just shows the probability that an organism will produce mutated offspring and how that changes over time. This value mutates over time. You can see it actually correlates, interestingly enough, with uh, the population graph, where when there are large dips in the population, there are typically uh, increases in the mutation rate as uh, the organisms kind of respond to environmental change. And as the population is getting low here, I'm actually going to change this new parameter that I've added, the auto food drop rate. So this just allows food to be automatically dropped into the world. You can see it's kind of popping up randomly all over the map. And this gives the movers a bit of an advantage. Um, this is a rather interesting change. It makes kind of a big difference in how the organisms evolve. So let's go ahead and turn up the speed here and we can watch the graph as the organisms change in composition and population size and all that interesting stuff. So let's take a look at the population graph and look, as you can probably expect, adding more food has increased the population of the world. It's also increased the number of species and we can see the mutation rate is going down. Organism composition is more or less the same. And I'm starting to notice the simulation is slowing down a bit, so let's take a look at this new I button. This will toggle rendering, it'll turn off the drawing. So the actual frames per second right now is something like 70 frames, even though our target is 300 frames per second. So let's press this button and boom, our frames per second has gone up to about 300. FPS, so that is a really big boost in efficiency there. And as the simulation continues to run, we can just watch the statistics as they continue to update. So let's run it again. Oh, look at that. So the movers have now totally dominated. Um, they don't rely on the producers for food anymore since food is being dropped into the world. Let's continue to run headlessly here. And Keep an eye on the statistics. We see the mutation rate is going up, uh, and the organism size has gone up, and the composition has changed pretty significantly. Uh, we see red cells, eyes, mouths are very prevalent, uh, whereas uh, green cells have totally died out. And both our population and species have dropped pretty significantly. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And yeah, these organisms, they'll start to get pretty weird. Uh, that This parameter change is pretty significant. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead and show you the result here. Okay, let's take a look at the statistics here. So the organism size has continued to go up. Uh, the population seems to have bottomed out. Uh, hasn't quite gone below 50, so looks like it's stabilizing. Uh, let's take a look at these species. Um, kind of up and down. And the organism size, yeah, so red cells have become very, very prevalent in the environment. And mutation rate, again, up and down. Seems like it is stabilizing a bit here. And by the way, the statistics only really store up to 50,000 ticks of data. That just keeps it from exploding in memory and uh, just constantly growing. But uh, that should keep it kind of under control. So, oh, it looks like the organism size is actually spiking a bit here, especially the red cells. Let's take a look, actually. Okay, look at these guys. Kind of uh, big, one eye, a lot of red cells. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, some of them have gaps in them. Let's go ahead and uh, let it continue here. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a bit, obviously. Uh, we can see the organisms are pretty big and kind of weird. They have these big gaps in them. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the statistics. Yeah, organism structure seems to have more or less stabilized. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, they look very similar to what they were before. We can actually look at them. Now they have a lot more eyes. In fact, that little extra appendage that's sticking out there has an eye on it, which is kind of cool. It's interesting how much the eyes change the evolution of the system. If you, if you look at one individual organism, just pay attention to how well it avoids bumping into other organisms. It's kind of impressive, honestly. Yeah, so these statistics, I think, make it very interesting to watch the long-term evolution of the system. It gives you a little bit better context. And this system will continue to evolve. I'm going to stop it here, and I'll leave it up to you to play it on your own time. Thanks for watching.